On November 10, 2018, an Iowa farmer named Todd Mullis called 911. He said his wife, Amy, had fallen on a corn rake and was now unresponsive. A few hours later, Amy Mullis was declared dead. Amy loved hunting, fishing and playing golf, but her favorite thing was being a mom to her three children. It seemed that Todd and Amy had a perfect life, their own farm, a big house, and three children. Amy, a registered nurse, had decided to leave her job to tend to the family farm. Their marriage began to crumble in 2013 when Todd found out that Amy had cheated on him. Amy and Todd decided to try to work things out. However, Todd became paranoid that Amy would have another affair, he began keeping track of her every move, and despite that, she soon began another affair with a man by the name of Jerry Frazier who serviced hog operations at Amy and Todd's farm. Todd and Amy had far from a perfect life, and they hadn't even slept in the same bed for nearly half a year before Amy's death. In July 2018, after Todd viewed a phone bill that showed more than 100 instances of Jerry Frazier and Amy texting, Todd confronted Amy and Jerry, who denied the affair and said that the text messages had been about other stuff, like showing pigs. Todd then called Jerry's wife asking questions about the text messages, and their discussion appeared to satisfy him. Two days later, he called Jerry and Jerry's wife and apologized, and asked that he and Amy stop texting. Jerry claimed that he and Amy agreed to slow things down for a while. However, Amy and Jerry decided to email each other instead so that Todd would think they stopped communicating. Did you do any work on the Mullis farm? Yes. And specifically, um, back in 2018, did you work on the Mullis farm? Yes. And in what capacity did you do work at the Mullis farm? Just overseeing their hog operation. I was there, depending on size and health, anywhere from bi-weekly to uh, maybe once a month, just depending on, like I said, sizes and health. And how long had you been doing business with the Mullis Farm? About seven years, probably. And who did you communicate with regarding the business side of the, the hog barns? Usually Todd, sometimes Amy, but usually Todd. And how would you communicate with Todd when you would communicate with him? If I wasn't there, it was phone or text message. And how would you communicate with Amy? Uh, text message or phone. Now, at some point, did your relationship with Amy change from a business uh, from a business relationship to some other type of relationship? Yes. And when was that? Roughly the first part of June, end of May, first of June. And would that be in the year 2018? Yes. And what, what kind of relationship did you and Amy start then? I had a physical relationship. And how would you and Amy communicate at that time? Text message. How often would you and Amy meet for you, this physical relationship? It just depended. I mean, it was everything was very short. It was maybe once a week, maybe. Have you speak into the microphone? <clears throat> maybe more depending on just how it worked out. And you indicated that you would communicate by way of text message. Yes. Primarily. And this was a sexual relationship, correct? Yes. And would you and Amy at times talk also about your relationship when you were together? And I'll say that again. Would you and Amy talk about your relationship? If, you mean by text message? By text message or in person? Not really. Did you talk about your future with Amy? A little bit, yes. And initially when you first started seeing Amy, what kind of things would you talk about in the future? Talked about there was a chance we could end up together. At the time that this was happening, um, that, that you had started this relationship with Amy, were you married? Yes. And Amy was married as well? Yes. What if anything happened in July 2018? Uh, Todd confronted me about a bunch of text messages, and then uh, I denied it and said it was over some other stuff dealing with kids and sports and showing livestock and uh, a couple days later he called my wife and talked to her about it and then 
approximately two days later, he called both of us back and apologized to both of us and said he should have handled it different. Now, let me just stop you. When you say that Todd confronted you, do you know the exact exact date that he did? No, I don't. Would it be fair to say that it was the end of July 2018? It was sometime in July. And how was it that Todd confronted you? Uh, called me. And what do you remember him saying to you? Just that she had texted me a lot of times in a day and wanted to know why or if it was possible. And when you say she, do you mean Amy? Amy, yes. And what was your response to Todd? I just said that she was texting me and it was over kids playing sports, uh, showing livestock, things like that. Now you indicated that around that same time, Todd called your wife. Yeah, a couple of days later after he confronted or called me about it, he called my wife. And he called her the first time? Yes. And do you know what that conversation consisted just of? Just basically told her that we were communicating by text message a lot. And then you indicated that a few days later there was a second yes. call to your wife? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. And what was the nature of that conversation? He, uh, he just called to apologize. Did he also apologize to you? Yes. Now, did you and Amy ever have a conversation about the fact that Todd confronted you? Yes, I told her he did. And what, if anything, did Amy tell you? She was upset that he did it. Did she also tell you that he confronted her? I don't remember. Now, after... After you were confronted by Todd, did you and Amy decide that you were going to communicate a different type of way? Yeah, I, I told her that we needed to slow down, and she was, we couldn't text anymore, so it was, she wanted to do an email. Did you then set up a Gmail account? Yes. And is the, after July 2018, would you use that Gmail account to communicate with Amy? Yes. And J Amy also had a Gmail account? Yes. And then you would both use that account, those accounts, I'm sorry, to speak with each other? Yes. Now, you indicated that you did um, tell Amy that you needed to slow things down. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes, I'm sorry. But you did still continue to see Amy? Yes. And you still continued to communicate with Amy up until her death? Yes. And you still uh, would communicate with Amy using those Gmail accounts? Yes. What, if anything, did Amy tell you about her relationship with Todd when you would be with her? She really didn't say much. We didn't talk about relationships much other than I know she wasn't happy. Did she tell you how Todd treated her? She made different notes or uh, not notes, but said she was felt like a slave or a uh, hostage around there. Now, did Amy ever tell you whether or not she was planning on leaving Todd? Uh, she said she was wanting to. Did you and Amy ever have any conversations about what Todd would do if he found out she was having an affair? One time she did say that if he ever found out, she would disappear. Were you afraid about Todd finding out about your affair? Yes. Why? Oh, why wouldn't you be? I mean, if you're having a relationship with somebody's wife, you would not want them to find out. Generally, where would you and Amy meet? Usually just uh, on a gravel road somewhere. And there were a couple times where you guys made plans to meet in different areas and in, um, in different locations. Yes. When was the last time you saw Amy? I don't know the exact date. It was sometime before she had her surgery. And where did you meet that time? I don't remember. And um, that time that you met, do you believe it was days before her surgery? Yeah, it had been a few days before. And did you guys have sexual relations that day? I don't honestly remember. You previously talked to police about, your, about, about all of these things, correct? Yes. And in fact, you talked to the police um, shortly after Amy's death. Yes. And you indicated to them that you believe the last time you saw her, that you did have some type of sexual relations. It wasn't, yeah. It was not sex. It was oral. So you, you do recall that there was some type of there oral sex? There would have been some of that, yes. Not sex. I guess I... And you and Amy would communicate by text messages approximately 15 to 40 messages a day, correct? Yeah, correct. And that was up until November 10th? Yeah, I guess. I assume. Now, Jerry, where were you on November 10th, 2018? I was at home. And... What area do you live in? I live around Anamosa. And how far is Anamosa from the Mullahs Farm? 
probably 45 miles, 45 minutes. What did you do that morning? Uh, my son was home from college. We show pigs. I'd actually bought a tanning bed to tan some pigs in the winter because their pigment doesn't get sun in the winter. So we hung a tanning bed in the barn, and then we cleaned the barn and walked our pigs that morning. And were you with your son all morning? Yes. And was um, was anybody else at your home when you were there? No. Now, on November 10th, 2018, did you see Amy Mullis? November, no. On the day of her death? No. Did you at any point go to the Mullis farm? No. Jerry, on the day of Amy's death, did you communicate with her that morning? Yes. And um, how was it that you communicated with her? Email. And did those emails start at approximately 7.40 in the morning? I don't remember the time. But... In August 2018, Amy's grandmother Margaret had taken a fall and was in the hospital where she soon passed away. And soon after Amy's uncle was hospitalized for a brain bleed, Amy had been spending a great amount of time at the hospital to be there for her family, and Todd began to get very angry that Amy was spending too much time away from home. On many occasions he texted Amy's stepmother Eileen Fuller about his concerns that Amy was cheating again as well as how much he hated her being at the hospital. Todd's mother was watching the kids while Amy was at the hospital visiting her uncle and when Amy went to pick the kids up one evening Todd's mother began yelling at Amy calling her a horrible mother and telling her she didn't deserve to be a mother. Amy's friends and family reportedly said Todd was extremely jealous and possessive, he would frequently text Amy wanting to know where she was. Another friend said she nicknamed Amy Pot, which stood for Prisoner of Todd. After Todd discovered Amy's first affair he told Eileen that he had to work things out with Amy because he did not want to lose his farm and everything he worked for. Amy told a friend that she stood to gain $2 million from the farm trust, as well as half the couple's valuable land holdings. We were there twice a year to put in the crops and take out the crops. Were you aware um, several years ago, about five years ago, that Amy had an affair? I was. And how did you find out about that affair? Uh, I found out through Amy. After that affair, um, what did you observe about Todd and Amy's relationship? We didn't see them a whole lot. Uh, they seemed to be working things out. After that, um, after you found out about that first appear, affair, excuse me, do you remember a time when you had a conversation with the defendant? I do. And yes. approximately how long after that affair was this conversation? I'm going to say right around two, two and a half years after. And who, where did that conversation take place? In my kitchen. Was anybody else present for that conversation? It was just Todd and I. Uh, the, the rest of the family was in the basement watching TV. It was a holiday. They were watching football. What did the defendant, Todd, say to you at that time? He said, Eileen, do you know what Amy did? And I said, yes, Todd, I do. And he said, I said to him, it looks like you're working things out. Did he then say anything else to you? He did. He said, well, we ha I have to. He said, I'm not going to lose my farm and what I've worked for. Now, in the summer and fall of 2018, did Amy have anything going on in her life that you were aware of? In 2018? Yes. Yes. Um, Amy was having um, some health issues at the time. And was there anything going on with her mother's side of the family? Yes, yes. Uh, she had lost her grandmother. And was anybody else in her family also in the hospital? Yes. Not long after her grandma died, I know that her uncle had an aneurysm. And were you aware of where Amy was spending a lot of time then? She was down in, in Des Moines at the hospital, I was told, spending a lot of time with her, helping with her uncle. Now, at the same time that Amy um, was dealing with these family issues, did you have contact with the defendant? Um, Todd had called me uh, several times and uh, discussing, worried about Amy not being home. Now, you said he called you. Um, would he call you on your cell phone? Correct. And did you guys communicate any other way? Texting. He would text me. And did he specifically, did Todd say anything to you about um, Amy spending so much time at the hospital? Yes. What did he say to you? He just said, um, I just, I, she needs to be home helping with the kids. Um, it, was, you know, it was very aggravating. Um, the kids were there, so he had a lot on his plate. How often would the defendant call you? Most of it was through texting. Um, he did call on occasion. 
And did you make any observations of the defendant's uh, behavior or how he was when he would talk to you or send you these text messages? Most, mostly angry, just frustrated anger. And did these conversations with the defendant go on for a couple of months? Yes. And did the defendant, did Todd ever talk to you about his, re about his relationship with Amy? He just said that they were, they were obviously having issues. He didn't go into extreme detail, no. Um, at some point, did you have a conversation with Todd about um, him suspecting that Amy was having another affair? Yes. And was that, if you recall, was those, were those text messages or phone calls? Uh, both. And specifically, what did the defendant, Todd, say to you about that? He just said um, he, was, he had uh, confronted the field manager. Um, I didn't really catch a name that he specified. Um, it was his field manager, and he said that he had, you know, he had asked him about it. He had confronted he and Amy both. And did he tell you what led him to confront them about it? Uh, he said that via her phone, he could tell that, you know, she was contacting him. They were contacting each other. And at any point did the defendant ask you for advice or ask you what you thought he should do about it? He did, yes. And what, if anything, did you tell him? I said, I don't know, Todd. If that was me, I guess I would talk to his wife. I didn't. That's what I would do. At that point, did you know who this person was that Todd was alleging she was having an affair with? No. Had no. you ever met him or did you even know his name? No. Amy and his mother had just gotten into a fight. Um, that was basically it. Did he tell you anything else about that fight? Something about uh, his mother just, and Amy had, I'm not sure why Amy was there, um, what that situation was. He just said that Amy, our mom kicked Amy out of the house, meaning her home. Can I just have a moment, Your Honor? Yes. Saturday, November 10, 2018, began like any other morning for the Mullis family. Todd and his 13-year-old son Tristan were up early to start chores around the family's Iowa hog farm. Around 9.30 a.m., both Todd and Tristan say they headed to one of the two large barns on the property to prepare for a delivery of baby pigs. Amy joined them while the two younger kids stayed in the house. According to Tristan, Amy was standing on a bucket cleaning the lights, and everything was fine for about 30 to 45 minutes. Then he noticed something was wrong with his mom. She began to feel dizzy, her legs were shaky and when she got on the bucket, she had to hold herself from falling off. Amy had undergone an outpatient medical procedure a few days earlier, and this was her first time up and out of the house. Tristan asked his mom if she was okay, and she insisted that she was. But a short while later, he said Amy suffered another dizzy spell. Tristan claimed that both he and Todd were worried. Todd suggested Amy go in the house and rest but asked if, on her way, she could grab a pet carrier out of a nearby shed. He told her he would need it later to round up some kittens and protect them from heavy machinery he planned to use. Amy agreed and left. Tristan claimed he and his dad continued working in the hog barn for about another hour and a half. Todd recalls that they then went to an office at the front of the barn. Todd looked out the office window and noticed the pet carrier wasn't where he had asked Amy to put it. Tristan said his dad sent him to the shed to check things out. When he looked into the shed, he made a horrifying discovery, his mother was lying face down with a corn rake, a heavy-duty farm tool with four sharp prongs, sticking out of her back. She was unresponsive and had no pulse. Tristan screamed for his dad. According to Todd, when he arrived at the shed, he removed the rake from Amy's back and asked Tristan to get the family truck. Todd claimed that he was in reaction mode and that he just wanted to get her to the hospital. He then got Amy into the truck and placed her on Tristan's lap, and they raced to the hospital. While on the road, Tristan said Todd called 911. Delaware County 911, what's the address of your emergency? Oh. Hello? I'm on the road. I'm out of breath. Okay. What's going on, sir? My, my wife, she's not responsive. I don't know if she tripped. I don't know if she was halfway out the door. I sent my son over to check on her. He yelled at me, and I'm, she looks gone. Okay. Um, we'll get an ambulance for in just a second. Um, I'm, I'm headed there. I grabbed her and I threw her in the truck. So the headed, sun pulled me. Okay, you're headed to the hospital and she's in your vehicle? Yes, and there's no pulse. She, there, she, there's no pulse. Can you pull over? I can. Okay, how about you pull over? You can I do anything. She's just, I just doing nothing. Okay, what, what is your name, sir? Todd Mullis. You feel anything? 
Amy, Amy, Amy. Okay, sir, what what happened that she's not conscious or breathing? She fell on a fork. I had to put a damn fork on her. It was an old fork getting in somewhere, and then she was halfway out of the barn. Like, she okay. called and get out, and then pissed and yelled, and I ran over there, and she's leaving. She is not responding. Okay. Come on. Sir, do you feel comfortable uh, doing CPR? I can try. I'll try anything. She is she flat on the? Are you able to get her flat across maybe the seat? Yep. One two. One two. Go on. Come on, just spawn. She's cold. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. The operator asked Todd to pull over and wait for help. First to respond was Deputy Luke Thompson, who recalled that Amy had quite a bit of blood on her clothes. They then put Amy on the ground, and Deputy Thompson started doing chest compressions. According to the deputy, Todd said he wasn't sure what happened to Amy. As for Tristan, that day, he told police he had been with his dad in the hog barn the whole time. An ambulance arrived and took Amy to the hospital, where she was pronounced dead soon after. Dr. Craig Thompson said he was told Amy's death had been a freak accident. But when Amy's body was examined they saw six puncture wounds on her back. Dr. Thompson began to question whether this was a freak accident or something more sinister. The forensic pathologist who performed an autopsy on Amy's body testified that she was impaled by a corn rake at least twice, possibly three times. The manner of death was homicide. In August 2018, Amy told her brother, Jeff Fuller, that she planned on leaving her marriage, she told Jeff that if anything were to ever happen to her that it would be Todd that did something to her. According to a police affidavit, he had used his iPad to search the internet for terms such as organs in the body, killing unfaithful women, what happens to cheaters in history, and what happened to cheating spouses in historic Aztec tribes. He had also initially denied confronting Amy about her affair in the months leading up to her death, then changed his story. On February 28, 2018, a warrant was issued for Todd's arrest. His bail was set at $5 million. At any point, did you have a conversation with Amy about an argument or fight that she had with her mother-in-law? Yes. And what, how did that conversation take place? Was that in person or over the phone or text message? That was over the phone. And approximately when did that conversation take place? It happened shortly uh, after... It would have been sometime in October. Um, we had been at the hospital with my uncle, who had had a, a brain bleed. Um, and Amy had come down. We were with mom in the hospital to support her because she had just lost her mother. And now her brother was in the hospital, and it didn't look very good at the time. Around this time, was Amy spending a lot of time in the Ankeny or Des Moines area? Yes. And what specifically did Amy tell you during that conversation? During the conversation, after she'd gotten home, um, she went to pick up her kids from her mother-in-law. And she said that her mother-in-law um, was was um, talking very negatively at her, told her that Amy would, had been abandoning her, her children and didn't deserve to be a mother and was just a horrible person. Did you and Amy ever talk about her relationship with Tom? Occasionally. Um, Back in around the time that Wyatt was born, which um, she said that she had not been happy and she was just not happy back then. How old is Wyatt currently? Wyatt is nine. And how old is Taylor Moss? Taylor's 11. And how old is Tristan Moss? Tristan's 14. Are you indicated that you had this conversation with Amy when Wyatt was born? Right around the time he was born. And where did that conversation take place? Um, I think it was at my dad's house, but I'm, I'm not positive. Now, I'd like to direct your attention to sometime around August 2018. Yes. Around that time, were, was there anything going on in your family? Yes. What was going on? My, our grandma, uh, Margaret, who is my mom's mother, mother, had fallen and was in the hospital in Des Moines. Um, and it, the prognosis was not, not good. I, Amy had gone to the hospital the day before I had gotten there um, and then I met Amy outside of the hospital when we got there. Um, Jeff, let me just stop you there. Yes. Um, so would it be fair to say that you and Amy were visiting your grandmother who was in the hospital? Yes. 
Now, at some point while you were at the hospital, did you have a conversation with me? Yes. And where in the hospital did this conversation take place? We were outside the emergency room exit. Um, she she met me there. She was my, me and my wife. She was going to escort us up to Grandma's room. Was your wife present for this conversation? Yes. And what's your wife's name? Morgan. And what, if anything, during that conversation did Amy tell you? So that conversation, um, when my wife and I uh, approached Amy, um, she said that she was planning on getting a divorce and she was going to leave Todd um, and that he was going to flip out. Did she tell you when she would be leaving Todd? At that time, she said it would be a little bit later after the crops were out of the field. Did she indicate to you um, that she was going to divorce Todd or just leave him? Uh, she was going to divorce him. Did your grandmother pass away from um, that time in the hospital? Yes, she passed away that same day. And shortly after your grandmother passed away, did you go anywhere to uh, take care of her belongings? Yes. Um, my wife and I, uh, my mother, her. It was all the people that were present um, on that day that were helped cleaning out the house. Yes. While that was happening, did you and Amy have a, a conversation? Yes. Was it just the two of you at that time? I believe so. There may have been some people that overheard the conversation. Um, we were all just around in and the what area. What did Amy tell you that? Okay. Amy asked me if she could store um, Grandma's couch and some chairs and lamps at my house um, so that she would have some furniture when she left Todd. Did you then take any of that furniture? Yes. And where I, did you put it? I stored it. I still have it in my garage off of it. And why, why did you keep that furniture? So she, when she moved out, so she would have something to, to start. Now, after this happens, you go to the hospital, correct? Yes. And at the hospital, family starts showing up. Yes. Your parents show up. Those family and friends show up, yes. Okay, so your parents, your sister Lynn shows up, correct? Yes. Uh, Bob and Eileen, Amy's dad and stepmom show up? Yes. Eventually, Peg and Randy show up. They're coming from a little bit further. Yes. And um, then there's also, I, I think there's some more family, too, showing up. Yeah, Jeff showed up. and There's um, fa friends, like you said, some friends are showing up. Yes. Um, Amy works at the hospital. Some people are stopping by that she, that she used to work with. Yes. And, um, and, and everyone keeps asking you what happened. Not everyone. Well, you remember talking to Bob and Eileen about what happened, right? Yes, what happened, yes. And you, you told him, I don't know, she fell on a corn rake. I said, I, re I really don't know, Bob, what happened. Okay. You never said she fell on a corn rake? I don't recall the conversation. You said it in the 911 call that we listened to, right? Yes, I did. You said she fell on a corn rake, right? Yes. You also said I sent my son to go find her, right? Yes. Now, that same day, you're at the hospital, and uh, Deputy Thompson asks to talk to you for a little bit. Yes. Remember that? And there's a video of that, right? I've never seen it. You've never seen it. But you remember talking to him. I remember talking to him twice. And it's um, shortly after Amy is pronounced dead. I... Yes, I think so. I don't know the exact I, I don't time. know the exact okay. time before or after. And he just wants to talk to you about what happened. Yes. And you start telling him about your day. Yes. And you tell him about how Amy was dizzy. Yes. And how you sent her or you sent her in to get the pet carrier, you, everything that you said today, right? Whatever I said at the time, yes. And you insist several times, to, you, you keep telling him that Amy was dizzy that day. Do you recall yes. that? And that he asks you, a Deputy Thompson asks you, were you with Tristan the whole time? And you say, yep, we were together the whole time. You remember that? Yes. And at that time, you do say a couple times, I, I, I don't know, I want to know what happened. You say that, right? 
Do you remember saying that? Yes, I do. And you say, man, I want to go back. I want to go back to the farm and see for myself. How could this, how, how would this happen? You say that, right? I was, I was at the sheriff's office, yes. Well, you also say it to, to Deputy Thompson, don't you? Initially at the hospital? I don't remember. I was asked multiple times by... And at that time, you don't say anything about, wait, I have cameras. Let's go see if we can catch something on camera. You don't say that to Deputy Thompson, do you? No. Because at that point, you don't know that they're not working, right? No, I did not. Because according to you, those cats probably just did it. That's what you After, think. Afterwards, yeah. So then in a, li a little bit later, you talk to Sheriff LeClaire. You recall that the same day? Yes. And with Sheriff LeClaire, Luke Thompson is also there from the, the deputy, or the deputy Luke Thompson is also there. Yes. And when you're talking um, to them, again, you keep talking about how Amy was dizzy that day. Because you're telling, you're telling what happened. Yes. And you're asked <clears throat> if anybody else was on the farm or if you heard anybody, and you said no because you didn't, right? Yes. And you again say that you were with Tristan the whole time. Yes. And this, do you, do you, if you remember, I know it was a really difficult day for you, but do you remember how much time from the f interview with Deputy Thompson till the interview with LeClaire and Thompson? Well, I remember Luke asking me two different times at the hospital. Okay, that's right. I'm sorry. You talked to him twice. And then he asked me if I could go downtown. So would it be within a few hours, would you say? Yeah, it was within, I would say, an hour. So then you go, you actually go to the Delaware County Sheriff's Office. Yes. And during that interview, you never say, oh, wait, I have cameras. Go, let's go check them. I never said. And obviously your mind's racing. You're trying to figure out what happened, right? Yes. But you never think about that. At that time, I'm sorry. At that time, because it was inside the shed. And... Well, but you said yesterday that the next day, then you thought of it, right? You thought, oh, I'm going to go check those cameras, yes. right? And you went to go check them because your wife was just had a horrible accident and died. Yes. So you thought of it the next day. Yes. Even though there wasn't a camera in the red shed. When I talked to family, when I got home. Oh, they reminded they, you. They said, I wonder if, if something will come on, the, would be on the cameras that would show maybe some sign of anything. And that's when you go and you go into the shop and you see, oh, they haven't recorded, right? I see the antennas on the ground, everything was off, or and then, not on the screen. But then you make sure, make, you kind of get them working again. Yeah, I got them up on the window, so. Now, obviously, this is a very traumatic time for you. You guys have Amy's services and you're, you're grieving with everything, right? Yes. And um, several days go by, and you still think this is an accident. Yes. Because you can't think of another explanation. Yes. And on November 16th, 2018, you still think it's, ac it's an accident when you go to the police station and talk to Agent John Turbot. Yes. And you th still thought it was an accident, even though you found her on her hands and knees, Face down, correct? Yes. Even though a corn rake was sticking out of her back. Yes. You're still just thinking, I can't believe that this happened. I can't believe she fell on a corn rake. That's what you're thinking. I had no idea what happened. So on November 16th, 2018, you speak with John Turbot. Initially, Sheriff LeClaire is in there, right? Yes. And then, and then it's just you and John. Yes. And you're talking about what happened. Yes. And... That whole first part, you guys are just talking about your life, your farm, Tristan, your kids, how you're such a great dad, everything like that, right? Yes. And at the beginning of that interview, Agent Turbot asks you how things are going, how's your marriage? And initially you say great, right? Because they were. Yeah. And then after a while, he says to you, all right, let's talk a little bit more about your marriage. Tell me the good and the bad. Is there any bad? And you do, you tell him about that first affair. Yes. And you tell him that you found out about it and that, you know, you guys reconciled. Yes. And you tell him since then things have been great. 
right? For the most part, yes. You tell them that uh, you guys were able to work through that, go to a little bit of counseling, and move forward. Yes. And that was when Amy quit working at the hospital, and you, you, you said because your family was really important to you, you wanted to just go keep going, right? Yes. So then Agent Turbot asks you, anything, since then, since that affair, the last five years, how have things been going? And you say, you keep telling him, great, they go, they're great, right? I don't remember what I said, but yeah. Well, you I watched think the, I, 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 yes. You watched the clip yesterday, yes. right? The first clip yep. started with him asking you, how have the last five years been? And you say, great, we're so open, it's been awesome, right? Because it has been. Yes. And he says to you, anything else, anything you need to, a, 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 any problems, anything, and you say no, Right? When we resolve our problems. Right. He says, in the last five years, anything you want to tell me, you say no. Yes. And it's at that point that Agent Turbot brings up Jerry Frazier and doesn't, he just says to you, hey, do you have a Jerry Frazier that works on your farm? And you say, yeah. Yeah. Because he does, right? He, he, was, he would come, he would help with the hogs and everything. Yes. And John, a- Agent Turbot goes on to ask you, How's your relationship with him? You say fine, because it is. You told us that, right? Yes. And then he asks you about Amy and Turbot, or I'm sorry, Amy and Jerry's relationship. And you say, good, it's business, not, nothing, nothing to cause me any concern. Yes. And he even, he, he, he asks you at the end of that conversation, before he walks out of the room, anything else I need to know about Jerry Frazier? And you say no. Right? Yes. Which was not the truth, right? Because you didn't tell him at that point about the fact that you confronted Amy and Jerry about the affair. You didn't bring I, it I didn't bring it up that you, time. You didn't bring it up then. Yes. And after this iPad is handed over to the agents, Travis Hemsath asks you for the password. Yes. And you don't give it to him right away, right? I hesitated because I had never been through this before. Right. I didn't know if it was... Right. No idea what was going on. I had no on. idea what was going on. And you look at your attorney, Bob Sabers. Yeah, I looked at him and... And yes. he, he says, go ahead and give it to him. Yes. And so you give it to him. Yes. And did you actually set up that iPad? No. Um, who would have set it up? Amy. So she set it up with your Gmail account? Yes. And you're, you're familiar, you have an actual Gmail account. That she set up, yes. Okay, but you, you sent emails from it. A few. So you understand, do you understand how Google works? Do you know how that works? No. Well, so on your iPad, you have a Google, a Google app, right? Or you can go to the Google website. Yes. Because so, so yes. we'll get into it, but some of yeah. those searches are yours, right? Yes. You, I mean, you admit there yes. are times you use that iPad to search things. Yes. So you know that you go and you can either go to the app or you can go to like Safari and go to Google through there. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, you also have a way on your iPad to get your Gmail, which is just your email, right? I usually went on Safari, Okay. put Gmail in. And then my email would. Then your email would pop up. And when you wanted to do a Google search, would you go to Safari or would you hit the Google app, if you remember? It was a button. Okay. I, but every time you went on that iPad, you didn't have to, um, you didn't go to settings and connect your Gmail account, right? Settings, no. No, because your Gmail account was already set to that iPad. I guess. And, and... Like you said, some of those Google searches were yours. Yes. But sometimes Amy would use your use your iPad. She would use the iPad, yes. Okay. Um, Amy would use, physically use that iPad, right? Yes. Like to search things, obviously, yesterday, like that, that wedding stuff and uh, bride stuff. I mean, like you said, you didn't do that, right? No, I did not. Pinterest, none of that stuff. No. That wasn't you. Um, but there are lots of Google searches. I know it's like 80 pages. You said yesterday you briefly went over those Google searches, right? Yes. I think when your attorney asked you, you said that you started looking through them. And um, 
But, I mean, if you look through them, and I know you look through them briefly, there's lots of ones that you know you did do. Yes. That you actually typed in and searched things. Yes. And things about hunting and combines and bows and all kinds of things. Right? Yes. And um, in, on July 26, 2018, there's a bunch of searches about Jerry Frazier, Jerry Frazier's address, Christy Frazier, and you did those. Yes. And that was right around the time that you confronted Jerry and his wife. Or, I'm sorry, confronted Jerry and then called his wife. Right? Yes. And on that, on that the day, a couple days before that, um, there's a search for menopause symptoms. And you told us you were looking up about whether or not you thought Amy was premenopausal, right? I don't remember when I looked that up. But you do remember looking it up. Yes. And you, and I know I asked you this, you have a flip phone, so you can't do internet searching on your phone. No. So your primary, when you would look things up, it would be on that iPad. That or on the computer. Or on the computer. Whose Gmail account was connected to the computer? All of ours. Okay, well. We, I, I don't know whose. You don't know whose was, okay. I'm not. So it would be, um, but you, all right, sorry. So in, on December 25th, 2017, there's a search for was killing more accepted centuries ago. Did you do that search? I think Amy did that. Okay, so you remember. You I remember, think we were looking it up together after we watched. Uh, we watched a documentary on... On, on December 25th. So you guys were watching um, a documentary on Christmas. Yeah. You remember that? Okay. And then... Now, I know yesterday you were asked about the search, uh, boys being raised like pussies. You remember that? Yes. And you said... You didn't do it, right? I didn't do the search, no. You think Amy did that one? We had talked about it, and so, I'm assuming she so you're did assuming it. she did You don't know if she did it. I don't know. Um, and it was because somebody at Wyatt's school was like, is it Wyatt's? Somebody from Wyatt's school was picking on him? I don't know if he was picking on him, but it was, it was, he was getting his money somehow. Okay. Which is also known as like a bully, right? Yeah. Now, on January 5th, 2018, there's a search for characteristics of cheating women. Did you do that search? No. Okay. Do you know who did that search? No. You have no idea? No. And just of, around that same date, there's a search for what did ancient cultures do to infidelity? Did you do that search? No. Again, you don't. You have no idea who did that search. No. There's a search on here, that same date. Um, Sixteen facts about cheating women. Did you do that search? No. And right, right around that time, did ancient cultures kill adulterers? Did you do that one? No. Now, um, let's see. A couple days later, there's search for thrill of the kill. Do you remember that one? Yes. And um, looks like there's a few visited sites. And then after, in that same bunch, there's search for thrill of the hunt. So did you do that one too? Yes. And then go one more, and it's actually typed in, once you hunt man, will you always feel the thirst? Did you write that too? Yes. Now, yesterday your attorney asked you about this series of searches that talks about being a biological, being the biological father of their children. You recall that? DNA. I, I'm yes. sorry, DNA. He asked you some questions yes. about that. And actually... The first search of that bunch is how to make sure your kids are yours, right? If that's what it says. 
and then there's then after that it's biological father things like that that's what your attorney showed you yesterday does that does that kind of rem- you remember those questions yes. so you you don't remember doing those searches either no you didn't do them no On September 5, 2020, Todd Mullis was sentenced to life in prison nearly a year after he had been convicted of the crime. The sentencing had been postponed repeatedly due to COVID-19 restrictions. Soon after the trial, Todd's attorneys filed a motion for a new trial. Trial and motion in arrest of judgment. I will deny those motions in their entirety. We will go ahead and proceed with sentencing at this time. We have not had, I don't believe, a pre-sentence investigation. Typically, we don't have one for a Class A felony. Um, Obviously, Your Honor knows that the defendant was convicted of murder in the first degree, which carries a sentence of a mandatory life imprisonment without parole. We, uh, Judge, you heard the evidence. You know what the defendant was charged with and what he was found guilty of. We would ask you to sentence the defendant accordingly. Mr. Hamrock, do you want to make argument on behalf of your client? Well, Judge, uh, in a Class A felony, there's not a lot of argument to be made, so uh, the court would go ahead and impose sentence. I did not do this. Uh, This is supposed to be America where you have a fair chance of proving your innocence. We shouldn't have to prove your innocence instead of the other way around. I thought it was guilty until, or not, uh, innocent until proven guilty. I feel this is the other way around. And I was a faithful and loving husband, and I never did this. Todd's motion was denied and he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. It is unknown whether he plans on appealing his conviction or not. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos.